Hello everyone, MuseScript here. Today I'm going to be doing another commentary. And it is on The Heart Shell Episode 2, Regret. Yeah, so... I guess this is where things start to get a bit more interesting. <laughs> and this will definitely make up for the April Fool's Day prank I pulled yesterday. So... I really wanted to try it out. <laughs> anyway, without further ado, I'm going to start the episode in 3, 2, 1, and play. So yeah, to start off with, this is previously on the heart shell. That's, that's what the track is called. And this is just pretty much recapping what, what happened in the last episode. Just recapping. I don't know what to mention here. Ah! <laughs> Just this art back in January. <laughs> and anyway, this was presented in pretty much chronological order. So I started with nine months earlier, and then, and then, and then after Tanks for the Memories after that, I guess. She definitely won't. Not by a long shot. Here we go again. With, with the intro. I already mentioned about this, so there really isn't that much to say here. But yeah, um... Right, I should probably say something. Uh, but I don't know what to say, because I've already mentioned some of the stuff that's been going on in, in the last video, the last commentary I did. <laughs> Just enjoy the quiet music playing in the background. We can we can try that. And then I can put out further information when the episode actually starts. Okay, here we go. Here's the episode. Regret. Here we have Applejack. She's pretty much collecting apples because it's winter. Uh, collecting apples because, yeah, because it's winter. I already mentioned that. And she was helping the rest of her family, but I couldn't be bothered drawing them in, so it was just Applejack. And also I was having this for the preview. And I was pretty lazy here. I just couldn't be bothered drawing the rest of the ponies. The only one I could be bothered drawing was was Lyra. If you if you recognize her. Well, art has kind of improved since last episode, but it kind of improves a lot in this episode as well, which I'm very thrilled about. Oh yeah. This theme is called Winter. It's also known as Rarity's theme. Again, it's one of my favorite themes that I've composed so far. It's it's a really really nice theme. You mean selling cider? She means selling cider. And yeah, 2 hours have passed with with that large large crowd. I ha I struggle trying to say that line. It was just <laughs> not very fun doing that line. Oh, Rarity, you're so oblivious. Applejack obviously means Rainbow Dash here. Oh, Applejack. 
She's just such a good helper. I've I've made her. <laughs> oh, sorry. The joke is because in um in the episode Rarity Investigates, we find out that Rainbow Dash really likes broccoli. And so she pretty much creates a grey cloud above the broccoli stand. And the guy who was running it just got so annoyed that he left. He just left. <laughs> that was that was a lot of fun to do. <laughs> And yeah, this is pretty much set a day after the first bit in episode one, for those who are confused. Oh, yeah, Applejack knows it was Rainbow Dash who destroyed the weather factory. Well, not destroyed, but whatever. And then this track is a piano version of I'll Fly. And I've pretty much called this arrangement Tank because she's recalling, she's pretty much remembering Tank. And I guess it's, it's really pretty actually. Just thought I'd mention that as well. I love using the piano in, in Sibelius as well. It's, it's really addictive. <laughs> That line was definitely a mouthful. Tank's expression in that snapshot, though. <laughs> Just coming off of his face for some reason. Oh yeah, this gave some anticipation in the trailer. I wanted to do that. <laughs> and then this track is called Lost One. And it kind of follows the, the previous track. But instead this is composed by me instead of arranged. Oh, just poor Rainbow Dash. I was just thinking about all the fun things that she was going to do with Tank, especially for half swarming. I would just think that that would be terribly heartbreaking at this point, and there would be <laughs> a really good reason for her to be devastated like this. Oh yeah, and I'm bringing a, a sad past of Applejack as well in here. I won't mention what it is, but... I know, it's usually weird. Rainbow Dash is not usually this emotional. In fact, it's very much out of her character. At least, I would have thought so until I watched Hanks for the Memories. And in this, in this universe, I think it would have been normal and expected, I guess. You won't find out until later, of course, okay. what what happened to Applejack. Ah, I just love this bond between Rainbow Dash and Applejack. They just have such a good uh, enemy slash friend relationship. Love-hate relationship, that's what it is. Oh, I feel so dumb for forgetting that term. But, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> this scene. Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy. This is completely irrelevant. But... I guess it's kind of similar to having a comic relief. Just after you have something that's really sad and tear-jerking. And yeah, Pinkie Pie with her antics, and this is when her theme fits. 
But again, out of character, when Pinkie Pie is forcing Fluttershy to do something against her will, but then uh, she's affected with Rainbow Dash not actually being here. She didn't use as much force in that with her megaphone. <laughs> and don't question Pinkie Pie's logic. I really loved this bit actually. This little this little scene when Twilight and Rarity Rarity enter. She is. And then we have reminiscing playing in the background again. <laughs> oh dear. Oh my god, Fluttershy's face in the background. It's so cute. <laughs> uh. Just the things I hide in the images. Seeing if anyone catches on. And then we can have Apple Jack and Rainbow Dash as the judges. After all, I was a judge of their competition, a staring competition with bees, no less. This is the most and then this is footage from the, the actual show, and that was referencing <laughs> um, the third episode of season four. Because, yeah. And then this is the instrumental of Lost playing in the background. Pinkie Pie, we have already talked about this. I seem to be very repetitive with, with Pinkie Pie, and my bad. Sorry about that. And then... <laughs> oh, oh, Fluttershy, hiding in the background, just clumped up in a little ball. <laughs> It's so cute. Yep. The still Whether you like it or not. And this is actually a poster that Pinkie Pie comes up with. And it's like displaying above Twilight and Rarity. And and I'm actually improvising lines here with Twilight and Rarity. And they're actually just playing along. They really don't want this competition to go on. They're just kind of being sarcastic, I guess, and encouraging the whole situation, and that's that's very funny. Oh yeah, this truck is called Competition, and it has themes from So Many Wonders and Giggle at the Ghosties to pretty much signify when they're doing ice skating tricks, and they're supposed to be saxophones, if you couldn't tell. Sibelius saxophones sound very strange. And I'm very sorry about that. Well, no. He was clearly a better ice skater than me. Is that a bad thing? Yes. I thought I was the best. Around the house. Is is this track? <laughs> I'm sorry. Just I cracked up when I was doing doing that picture, when Pinkie Pie just poofs her mane to be the shape as Rainbow Dash's mane. That, that was hilarious. And I know Rainbow Dash has adopted that ability as well, to change, to change her mane into different ponies, as we've seen in Newbie Dash. And also Half Swimming Tail, she's done that as well, like the episode directly after. Jealous of Fluttershy's skating for some reason, so she 
all her stupid contests to prove she was better. And you were a county judge. <laughs> and yeah. What's so funny? <laughs> you seriously want me to believe that you sent a contest to see who was a better ice skater? You or Fluttershy? <laughs> that sounds like something that Rainbow Dash would do. <laughs> yeah. It really, really does. But probably not with Rainbow Dash, but with some pony else like Applejack, maybe. Yeah, the void of Rainbow Dash not being around. <laughs> The frame remain. This is the theme playing right now. Plays again. I still claim this is one of my favorite osts in the whole thing. Oh yeah, I had this theory that Tank had kind of changed her and brought her sensitive side along. And so she would actually be a bit more cautious around her surroundings and stuff. Uh, kind of. But I already mentioned that in the previous commentary. And yeah. And now we have another time jump to Half Swimming Eve, Christmas. And funny that this episode aired on the 25th of February, which is like exactly 22 months. Two months after Christmas. Hey, oh, <laughs> sorry. Just Angel the bunny is actually the angel on the Christmas tree, the half swimming tree. Another hidden thing to see if anyone would actually figure that out. Oh yeah, this track is called Fluttershy the Party Host, and it's actually one of the first tracks I composed back when I was having it as a film soundtrack format. But then I decided to have it more as an anime soundtrack format. Oh yeah, and this synopsis is pretty much based off Halfbreakers, because I had the theory that Halfbreakers and Tanks for the Memories would be happening in the same winter. That would only make sense, after all. I didn't really have any other reason why Fluttershy was just chosen for the for doing the half swimming party and the orig origin of that. Um, I guess I was just thinking of after they did their playing Canelot that they would just have a party that Pinkie Pie Pinkie Pie threw. I don't really know. <laughs> oh yeah, back to Griffin the Brush Off episode. Okay. Now we have the second original song in the series, Half Swimming Party 101. This is pretty much one of the happiest vocal songs in the soundtrack. And the melody for this, I actually composed, I don't know, about, about four years ago actually? Back in 2013, it was just me mucking around on the keyboard one day when I was still in high school. And then I just, just decided to recycle some compositions and I needed a cheery song for Pinkie Pie and so then I just dug this melody out and I'm like okay we can use this as as the song and singing as Pinkie Pie is a lot of fun well I kind of broke the mic well I didn't break the mic but there was definitely a lot of distortion because I was using my chest voice. Well, trying my best not to create distortion. <laughs> Sorry. She popped the balloon with her hair. It, it proves that her hair is just really insane. And then there's this bit here with the pictures. She's breaking the fourth wall, as she usually does, and like coming out of the circle, and Fluttershy's just panicking. Well, technically it's rock school, because she learned a lot about rocks, but she still got to listen to the soundtrack when it came to half swarming. I 
I just love this duet between Pinkie Pie and Fluttershy because they have so much contradicting opinions. Fluttershy doesn't want to do it, and Pinkie Pie wants her to do it. I guess Pinkie Pie's trying to help her, in a way? Without trying to help her. Doing that with air quotes because Philly Vanilli, she wasn't that much help at all. To plan a heartwarming party. <laughs> yes. How am I supposed to do any of that stuff? Don't worry, Lime Tree Seed. We figured that since you would be hosting the party, you can do it yours like that. Fluttershy style? Yeah, like um, something to do with animals. Animals? You know, the music just might interest you at least. <gasps> I've got it. I know exactly what to do for this year's hosting party. I and then I decided to have something a bit more fair on Fluttershy's part, so she could like do whatever she wants, which pretty much. Wait, before you go, what time does the hosting party start? I usually start the party at 10 p.m. But since this is your party, you can make it any time you like. You know, it couldn't be any time. Pinky definitely keeps a record of something that she did a year ago. What can I do for you? Well, as you know, oh yeah, Fluttershy is wearing the basket on her head because she wanted to mimic something that Pinkie Pie would do, and that's a reference to Party of One. Oh yeah, there's a bit of audio glitch here, and that's because I had to edit sound of tracks on Windows Movie Maker. It was a pain, actually. A huge pain. I'm just glad for episode 4, I'm editing the sound effects in Audacity. That's, that's a good thing. Oh yeah, and that bit of track was also in Fluttershy the Party Host, and it also had Rarity's theme played on the hum <laughs> a harmonica. I meant to say harpsichord. And then, yeah. Because that would just take place after the intro to Halfbreakers, because Twilight was in the actual episode. And she's a very, qu very quick reader. So that's why it only took her a couple of seconds. Ugh. Oh, I, I can't get over Fluttershy's right eye. Oh, well, left eye. It's a, it's really thick. It kind of looks like she's wearing eyeliner or something. I don't know. <laughs> ah. Second time drawing Spike, and I've actually gotten better at it. I'm surprised that Spike actually forgot <laughs> about tank hibernating. Then it had been a couple of days and I hadn't really mentioned it that much, so that explains that theory. Okay, back to Rainbow Dash. Oh, the calendar. She just had writing down, waiting for tank, all of those days. And then the flower in her bag is for Fluttershy. And Fluttershy has no track of time, because it's the afternoon. It's clearly the afternoon. Oh yeah, the last track was called Half Swarming, which was a combination between Angels from the Realms of Glory and Heart Carol. And this track is called Tension. Oh yeah! I welcome my other artist, Dolphin Wave X's art, to this. I was actually very happy that she was doing art 
and she really wanted to do art, so I definitely had that change of heart. And yeah, I was, yeah, really impressed with the art that she did here. Just leave me and then back to my art. And I also featured her art in the trailer as well, just to get an idea that I wasn't the only artist anymore. And she, yeah, she's pretty much dumped the basket and the invitation in the snow to drench. And then Fluttershy's actual line, done by Andrea Lipman. And this track was heard in the episode 2 trailer, and it's called Regret, which is the same name as the episode. And I really liked the art here because I was experimenting with the soft shades and it was it was much better, I thought, in my opinion. That was a mouthful. And then, of course, this is a reference to Hurricane Fluttershy. Original song number three. This is, this is one of my favourites. This is, I will not say another word. Originally, th when I wasn't planning to compose the music for this, this was going to be a cover of Mistake, which was a song back in the noughties, I guess, and the lyrics were going to be changed, I guess, something like that. But then, yeah, then I decided to compose my own songs. And at the moment, in this, we have Fluttershy's perspective. She regrets saying all the stuff. She regrets saying everything to Rainbow Dash, saying that Tank had to hibernate, saying that her winter was going to be petless, and even forgetting that Tank was still hibernating. And she definitely feels that regret, and she really wants to make it up to her, but she can't really bring herself to do it. In fear that, well, she might say something wrong again. And she feels like she has broken Rainbow Dash for good, I, I would think. Because Rainbow Dash had a tough shell, and that tough shell might have pretty much been broken apart because of Tank. And yeah, that's pretty heartbreaking with the flower, because the flower was addressed to Fluttershy, but even Rainbow Dash doesn't think that she'd be able to give it to her. And then we have Rainbow Dash's perspective. I had a bit of trouble trying to sing Rainbow Dash's part, because it was more of a chest voice. But I managed to pull through, and in Rainbow's perspective, she blames Fluttershy for feeling sad about Tank in the first place and doing all those actions to stop Winter from coming, all those other things, because she regrets trying to stop Winter from coming because she wasn't really thinking straight. Even when Fluttershy is trying to make amends, Rainbow Dash can't handle it because she's worried that she might make another mistake. And, yeah, she's also really sad that Tank is not with her. She's wiping her tears away, and Fluttershy is trying to make sure she's okay, but unlike Fluttershy's perspective, Rainbow Dash doesn't even look back when the other fades away, and that's pretty heartbreaking, that's pretty harsh. And then this is my favourite bit of the entire song, when it kind of builds up to a minor key like this, and then both are in view. And this is the bit that I showed in the trailer as well, and now they're both singing together. And that image, that image is a really powerful image because it kind of shows their friendship breaking apart and now they're even talking to each other, even when the other one isn't really there. Another 
And I like it when they sing in octaves like that. And then it just ends on Rainbow Dash and I really love the shading that I've done here. It's definitely a step up from episode one. And then those are the other presents. The purple one's for Twilight, the white one's for Rarity, the blue one is for Pinkie Pie, and the red one was for Applejack. And then this, I was just called Lonely, which is a flute melody from the song before. And yeah, it's like a snowstorm at the moment. Which happened in the middle of nowhere, but who cares? And this image was altered from the original trailer I did back in December. It just kind of looked a bit weird. And also she's in front of a fire. And then we have... The Evil Eyes. I won't mention her name, but yeah, we have the evil eyes and that's the thing that we finish on. And yeah, we have Half Swing Party 101 playing in the background and we have my favorite picture that I drew from, from the song. And uh, yeah, this episode had two original songs unlike, unlike last time. Which, of course, was a bit of a change of pace, and they also were very contrasting. One was ridiculous and happy and cheerful, and then the other one was really heartbreaking and sad. Yeah, and they both included Fluttershy. So yeah, another thing I wanted to add before I leave and end this video is that it definitely took me much quicker to complete the art for this episode than last time. Last time, episode one took me about three months. I started in October and finished in January, whilst this episode only took about two weeks to complete. The main reason for that was because I wasn't doing school or anything. I was in the middle of summer break, so summer holidays in the Southern Hemisphere. And I had a lot of time on my hands. So, I guess too much time on my hands, but I think that was very handy because I was doing two songs instead of one. And usually for the songs, I don't really do animatics, it was just more of a half animatic for them. I did more pictures for Half Swimming Party 101 then. I will not say another word. But yeah, it, um, it was a bit of a problem after I finished art. I was kind of bored. I didn't really know what to do. I was just really looking forward to airing the episode and I was already planning art for episode three, but I wanted to wait until episode two aired so I could, uh, plan out the artwork for episode 3 because I wasn't the only artist anymore and that would only make sense in that case. So yeah, that was my commentary for episode 2 of The Heart Shell and I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, this is Muscript signing out. Bye!